Hey there, Kev Kildir. Going to cover a concept here. It's not necessarily how to do death sentence or how to play well in the game, but I kind of wanted to give some visibility how to make space within playing this game. Now, I got some background footage of myself and a couple of people that join me through streams. Now again, these are a little bit higher leveled up folks that have played the game fairly quite a bit, obviously, and know what the heck they're doing. Now, this concept can still apply to a lot of people that are still relatively fresh or if there's one or two experienced players in the lobby, that sort of thing. However, I'm only using this as background because we're going to be using Rise of War Dogs as a bit of some lecture material. Because I'll be showcasing kind of stuff to say, hey, this is maybe what I suggest for people instead of, you know, relying on such risky gameplay or why there's such a difficulty jump between Death Wish to Death Sentence. So let me ask you this. How many times have you been in this kind of a situation before? They're dying without my first aid kit rocking to save them? That's weird. Inspire wasn't working. Oh, time to turtle in this spot. Oh, no! My second down, because I got flanked. Safe to say we're getting overwhelmed. I know the other folks weren't making a lot of space. Even with me playing crew chief in the party, it didn't really help them too much for survivability. Again, when it comes to your build, you gotta make sure that you are comfortable so then you can make the space for yourself and the rest of your team as opposed to continuously running and getting overwhelmed. Payday 2 is a team-based shooter game where it's the cops versus the robbers not necessarily running in between every cop in the map and getting the objectives done. There's no space being made from that situation. Now after that reset, decided to switch my build so I can get back to my usual sniper set, so then I can create more space with what's needed for the team. Yes, we're back in this lovely corner again, because, well, I don't think the other guys were too experienced in terms of their DS mechanics or their either learning or not used to death sentence in general. However, it goes back to the whole cops versus robbers, how they have more space and not us. We need to make that space, otherwise we're gonna lose. The whole run itself definitely wasn't clean and as you can see there, it wasn't pretty, but we got her done because a little bit more of a stronger build and maybe a reset was needed, but I don't think it was pretty. So anyways, enough rambling. What I wanted to showcase was something that is similar to my stream, similar to my previous videos, is steady gameplay. What I mean by that is generally taking it slow, taking your shots, making space before you get to the objective or need to do certain X, Y thing on the map or if anything happens to your teammates, that sort of thing. I don't recommend risky gameplays such as using, well, hate to say the words, Swan Song, Messiah, or all those crazy risky skill-like mechanics. I know you can totally play it. I do have videos on examples and showcases on this stuff, why it isn't entirely great. However, a lot of folks are lazy. I understand that's fine. This video may or may not be for them, but again, there's a better playstyle out there which is taking your time and making space, which is what this is all about, or if they just want to get their achievements so they can go back to Death Wish or play different video games. Now, I know this isn't a video on how to do Death Sentence or how to perform great in Payday 2. Again, that's all going to take time, practice, experience, a little bit of research, learning, all that sort of stuff. The biggest thing, honestly, for Death Sentence that I'm going to say, which I will be alluding to in another future video, will be Honestly, take them out before they take you out. And the best way to do that is, honestly, with health-based perk decks. We all know that Kingpin and Stoic are very great, and they're a stronger perk deck. 
And with those stronger perk decks, that allows you to be outside in the open for a little bit and take out as many cops before you feel too overwhelmed. So if you have a proper build set for whatever weapon set you're using, such as a sniper with greys, maybe a couple of jokers to take the heat off of you and your team, or if you have crits or some berserker so you can get that bit of extra damage, create more space with that DPS, that sort of thing, that means more points for you. And if you have a better build, the more likely you are able to survive and help your team. Now onto the gameplay itself. The objective says escort Mr. Pink back in the warehouse. Yep, we gotta go out there, go grab the objective and rush out there. Now as you can see, one teammate was able to comfortably get out there and make sure that he's good to go. However, we're at the end of the assault and we made so much space. There's no cops out there. We are able to proceed easily, have all the space in the world because we just took care of the entire assault. And it's roughly about 100 to 120, sometimes more cops per assault. And as I'm pressing tab here, you can see that we took care of them evenly as a team. Not necessarily, oh, we're just going to rush, play risky, and expect that everybody performs the same. And that's what I notice with public games. A lot of new players tend to have risky play styles or builds and expect their teammates to have the same thing they do. I'm going to say this flat out, don't. It's just rushing leads to frustration. Frustration leads to resets, rinse and repeat. Nobody's going to be happy and nobody should be expected to play one thing or another. Again, I don't care if people play swan song or play risky dodgy stuff. People see it all the time. It's not fair to other teammates and sure they can play it, but in the long run of things, it's not great. Before we touch the next assault, I kind of want to showcase some pictures. Yep, we're going to be taking our lovely diagrams here because it's time for a major lecture. From the start of the assault, we're merely stuck at the warehouse. We're the blue guys, the robbers, and all the red spots are all the indications that where the cops are going to spawn on the map. That's basically the space indicators. We want to make sure that we have space. Granted, if we do absolutely nothing, we can see that the cop space eventually gets a little bit bigger. Like I said, the trick is to take them out before they take you out. So if we make sure we keep hammering on their spawns where they're coming in, that means we're able to have more space to ourselves, have better angles, and be able to take care of objectives when they come along. Lastly, this is what it could look like if we did absolutely nothing with our build. Did absolutely nothing to take care of the enemies. Did absolutely nothing in making space. It definitely looks busy, especially with all the cop space that they have in red. A lot of space that we don't have. So, how are we going to get the objectives done easily without frustration or without rushing? Now, let's actually use our guns. If we take that blue square and split ourselves up, hence the four robbers, we can take different angles and approach the situation so we can handle the onslaught of cops coming towards us. One individual by the window in the car can easily take the outside and what's going to come from within the warehouse. Another individual can easily take the opposite window, which is where I was mostly during that time. Our third guy can take another angle, helping the front and the back. Now that we have all angles covered, we can easily take care of the onslaught of cops and get ready for the next objective. So here we are, Mr. Pink needs to get escorted to the warehouse. Now there's multiple ways to take care of this scenario. What we did in the example video that I had was we took care of everything before it took care of us. So we had all the space in the world and it was a breeze walking him back. We didn't have to rush, we didn't have to worry, and it was fine. The only caveat to this is we gotta wait until the assault is over. And that requires some patience, which I know a lot of folks tend to be a little rushy on playing this game. If you wanted a mix during a rush during an assault, if you wanted to proceed with the objective, this would be more suited for a team that's really, really comfortable and really aggressive. You can make this happen. It could cause a little bit of risk just in case somebody goes down, but it is definitely doable to do objectives during an assault. You just have to be hyper-focused where angles are coming in just so you don't get flanked or shot in the back. Lastly is the most aggressive and the most risky. Yep. Remember when I mentioned Swan Song and all that risky gameplay? If you're not going to use your guns, if you're not going to use those angles, if you're not going to create space, this is exactly what it's going to look like. 
you're going to be sworn with the bunch of red space that the cops have, and you got nothing to work with. Keep in mind, you got to go back to the warehouse in this objective. You can't just make it out there and say everything's okay. For those familiar with the map, we got to go back to the warehouse, grab a saw, and extract diamonds. Now in this example, we had the top left portion of the map where we gotta go take the next objective. The key thing is here, we're relatively close to our teammates. However, we're still spaced out so we can take different angles and have more space for us to work with. I'm still in the warehouse making ends do that our flank is still secured when we gotta take those diamonds back to the warehouse once again, while the rest of my team proceeds with the objective, as well as we have folks in the middle that are ready to rotate in case any emergency happens. Now that we got those diamonds, you can see that we've effectively made space for ourselves. We don't have to use a lot of crazy tactics or throw a lot of flashbangs or have absolute AOE control. We were slowly and steadily progressing throughout the map and we were able to take care of things appropriately. Finishing off here, we now effectively created the entire map to ourselves, not just from the first assault, but from the last assault that we needed. We can effectively just run to the exit and proceed to escape. Very simple concept. If you kill them before they kill you, easy peasy. And this is why I strongly encourage effective build making. So if you're comfortable with your weapon making space, delivering damage, you're able to help yourself and the team, which makes maps relatively easy for everyone to have fun and enjoy. Now on to the next map. Basically, I'm gonna be going over the same stuff we were talking about earlier. However, I'm just going to recap real quickly all the things that was said. Yeah, there's definitely a big difference when you use your weapons, use proper angles, and you do a little bit of teamwork to create a lot of space for yourself and everybody around you. Which is why I don't recommend risky gameplay or risky like builds because it's not even worth it and it's not even needed. Even in a standard pub, I'm pretty sure a lot of folks are able to run with said weapons or said builds and they'll be good to go if things are done properly and they're comfortable with it. So I'm not a whole fan of the whole rushing thing anyways. One thing that is definitely discussed quite a bit is the fact that a lot of folks say kills don't matter. Now I'll respect that and I'll say yes and I'll also disagree no. Kills don't matter because you still need to get the objectives done, whether that's like we did earlier, escorting Mr. Pink and grabbing the diamonds for us and escaping. Yes, kills don't really quote unquote help the objective. However, if you have made all that space by making kills against the cops, you have a lot more room to work with. It's that room that's very important. That's why space is critical when you're trying to go from point A to point B to point C all the way to Z. Now, if you're making kills that are totally away from the objective, yeah, those kills definitely won't matter. Like, say you're in Big Bank and you're trying to loot the vault. Yeah, you want to make sure that vault area is secure. If you're still making kills at the very front at the beginning of the heist, yeah, those kills are definitely not going to matter. The ones that matter the most are the ones that are in front of you, next to you, making room for the objective for you and your team. Now, as you saw earlier, what's the biggest struggle between Death Wish and Death Sentence is the fact that a lot of players are very, very, I, I should say new, or worried, or just not comfortable to make that space. Because Death Wish does a lot less damage when it comes to Death Sentence. It's a big spike going from, you know, less than 100 all the way to 225 as the common number from Zeal Heavy Units. So if you compare your normal public games from Death Wish, when you start journeying to Death Sentence, you can see that there's a lot less space in Death Sentence, but you have a lot more space in Death Wish because you're much more comfortable with the said build and weapons that you're able to work with. So again, this will probably take practice for people that are definitely new to DSOD or Death Sentence, that sort of thing, but I'm sure if people put just a little bit of effort, take it slow, take it steady, Find something that works for you, you can and will make some big success for you and your lobbies. Another thing to note is that if you think of the assaults, think of them as how much time and work you have with them. Are you going to feel more prepared that you've done a good assault where you've done good wave clearing and you made lots of room for objectives in your team? Yeah, you're going to be more suited off for the next assault. 
because you don't want to rinse and repeat the same issue over and over with risky gameplay as I mentioned earlier. So if you clear everything nice and steady, you and your team will be ready. Remember that whiteboard? Yep, we're gonna do another quick lecture here. It's gonna be relatively the same because day two or second day for Reservoir Dogs is very similar. As you saw in the beginning of the assault, we have the spawn points located around us. So we gotta make sure we're ready to take care of them before they take care of us. Otherwise, the space that the cops have will grow pretty big. So big that sometimes the space will definitely overwhelm a lot of public lobbies, and this is what I generally see when I join games that aren't really doing their best. So going back, if we actually took our guns and prepared angles forward, we will be able to get a head start on the whole assault. The video that I had shown a little bit earlier, yeah, we were definitely above average when it comes to public lobbies per se, and we were outside of the diamond shop and Reservoir Dogs. We were out on the streets making kills. Myself, I was making sure the objective was okay, but nonetheless, that space created means space for you and your team. Now that the hack is done, we can finally rotate to the back because having a little bit more defense and cover for the next assault waves is very important, as well as getting ready for the next objective. For the purpose of the diagram, I kind of outlined the blue squares for what would probably be recommended for guarding the upper floor since, you know, the map flight footage was a little jarring, bear with me. But hey, keep in mind there's now another new spawn point at the top that we gotta take care of. So, again, very similar to the first day in Reservoir Dogs, gotta make sure the front and the back is secured. Oh, Jesus, what a fucking graze! Not gonna lie, I was pretty proud of that shot. And stuff like that is stuff that you guys can accomplish. I mean, Snipers is just one example with Greys, but if you're comfortable and excited to play something, you're guaranteed to be more motivated to succeed, but don't get too hyper or too rushy or lose your head. Because, again, this is a tactical shooter at the end of the day, team-based tactical shooter, so make sure you take it slow for you and your team. Back to the lecture, now that we have the upper control all secured that we've cleared the objective, have room for us to work in, we can now guard the top and provide support to where our allies are still on the first floor or out in the streets. The funny thing about Reservoir Dogs is what I see in a lot of public games is that a lot of folks like to rush for that next objective after the drills, which is go get the liquid coolant. Now, as you see here, we have the entire map to ourselves yet again. However, if you just simply wait the assault, it should be relatively clear if you have a decent build for you and your team. You can easily grab the stuff after the drills are done. They don't even need drill skills to get sped up. Then you can easily go to Mr. Blonde's car, grab the coolant and come back and there's zero issue with that. Unless you want to play Risky and Rushy again, all up to you, but I don't recommend it. But it's entirely possible just to wait the assault and you're good to go. Now on to the next objective of waiting for the liquid coolant to finish, apply the C4, and open up the vault. It's just waiting for another assault, and if you take positions and make space accordingly, it'll be perfectly open for you to have all that space to move the diamonds from the vault to Mr. Blonde's car. If everybody was ready for the objective, yeah, this could be another example of where kills don't matter. However, since we're starting a new assault, we decided that it might be a little bit easier if we take our time a little bit and make sure we're good to go. So by having two by the objective and two outside, we were able to move the bags relatively easily. In other games, we don't all have to be outside constantly making kills or constantly doing objective. It's finding that nice, sweet balance. Some folks like doing more DPS and some like to be more objective focused. Now again, everybody's different and this game has a ton of RNG. You gotta find what suits you, and if you can do both relatively efficiently, you can easily fit yourself into different teams and play styles for whatever's needed. Now, for the big recap, what creates space? Obviously, as I said many times throughout the video, having better builds. If you have builds for survivability, damage, joker skills, or just standard team helping skills, you can easily make space. I'm not gonna go into full detail what all these skills look like or what these builds are gonna be. That's gonna be for a future video. 
Another big thing for making space is having better angles. If you're in an awkward angle where you're having trouble aiming or trouble positioning or trouble falling back, maybe double check, what can I do differently? Where can I position myself better just in case X or Y thing happens? Having map knowledge is immensely huge. It is probably the number one best tool you can have. If you have map knowledge of what's going on, what's needed for the next assault, what's the next objective, what are key little tiny little tips and tricks can you do to make this faster? Will a key card help? Will a shape charge help? Will a certain drill skill help? Stuff like that. There's also spawn camping, which as you can see here, myself and a teammate are taking advantage of spawns before they get us. So spawn camping does help quite a bit, but that goes back to map knowledge. The last thing I can recommend is if you're still struggling for space is honestly comes back to the perk deck, not just the build itself. And the top five perk decks that I still stand by are obviously Stoic, the most overpowered broken health based perk deck ever, Kingpin if you have the DLC before Overkill decided to turf it, Hacker, really great CC and really great HP healing, Anarchist for DPS, and Armor just for that steady, slow, consistent gameplay. Finishing up here, yeah I know it was a bit of a long one and probably not the best example, but it goes to show that folks with that are comfortable with their build, ready to rock and roll, and of course have some fun so they're not stuck in a corner dying to the same enemy units over and over and over again with other people that they play in their lobby, you can effectively make space, get your DSOD done, or continue to improve your gameplay. I think that wraps it up for me. Hope you guys enjoyed watching it. Hope you learned something, and I'll see you next time. 66. Okay, not bad. Well. So close to a new crew down. But over aura kind of overextends a little bit sometimes.